Andy, did you hear that? Come on. Did I hear what? Uh, that whistle. That's the Rinso White whistle. Oh, yeah, and Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White. And Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> about this time every year, I try to remember the New Year's resolutions I made last January. And if I can remember one out of ten, I feel like I'm doing fine. Of course, there are some resolutions you just can't help but keep. For instance, if you ladies resolved to use Rinso for clothes washing in 1945, from 1946, I'm sure you'll still be using Rinso. Because those soapy rich suds make wash day easy. As little as a short ten-minute soak, plus a few quick finger rubs on extra soil places, gives you a wash that's spotless all over. All your lovely washable colors come rinse bright, safely, through wash after wash. And you'll hang out a white wash that's rinse white. So don't forget, get rinse And now, our star, famous and Andy. <laughs> It's almost New Year's Eve, and the big event in Harlem is the New Year's Eve party to be given by the socially exclusive Charles Jackson family. At the moment, we find Andrew H. Brown in his office, telling his secretary, Miss Blue, why he knows he will be the only one among his friends to be invited to this smart affair. You know, Miss Blue, it's a shame that I ain't going to spend New Year's Eve with my friends this year. But I was the high society type, and uh, Charles Jackson's only wants them kind of peoples at the party, you know. Mr. Brown, is the Charles Jacksons really society people? Oh, sure. They is richly all right. You know, they is the only family in Harlem that's got a cook and an upstairs maid. A upstairs maid? Yeah. Of course, I guess the downstairs must get pretty dirty, huh? It must be almost wonderful to be invited to a real society party and get a beautiful engraved invitation. Mm, invitation, yeah. I, uh, well, to tell you the truth, that's what I'm waiting for. Mine ain't come yet. Well, if you ain't got your invitation yet, how you know you is invited? Oh, I'll be invited. Don't worry. You see, I done took the Jackson's daughter, Camellia, out a couple times, and they got to invite their daughter's boyfriend, you know. That's right, I guess. Oh, sure. I showed her a swell time on two different nights. Why, the last time I took her out, my bill come to over six dollars. It did? Yeah. I wonder how much hers come to. <laughs> well, Mr. Brown, you mean to say you didn't pay her bill, too? Well, being a rich gal, she says something about a Dutch treat. You know, she likes me all right. Uh, by the way, when is the morning mail due? Maybe my Graves' invitation will be in that. The morning mail come two hours ago. There was nothing in it but a bill from your tailor for turning the lapels around on your suit. Uh, we only get one more mail before New Year's, and that ought to be here in a little while. Yeah, well, that's the mail that the invite will be in, all right. No question about that. I showed that that... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here come in. Well, I'm going in the back office and finish my work. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, how is it, there, son? Hello, Amos. Hello. Yeah, well, then I just dropped in to find out what you're doing New Year's Eve. I thought maybe you'd like to go with me and Ruby over Now, wait a minute, Amos. Wait a minute. Huh? I'm sorry that I ain't spending New Year's Eve with none of my old friends this year. Oh. This will be the first time I ever missed a New Year's Eve with you. But, Amos, I was going to a very exclusive party. Only the very high society types like me is going. Oh, well, I'm glad you're going to a high-class party. And uh, me and Ruby figured that maybe you were uh, invited to the same place as we were, so we could all go together. Well, look, Amos, I am sorry, but uh, let's face the thing. Yeah. You was a good enough guy, but uh, we don't revolve around in the same social circles, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, where's you invited to? Oh, I don't guess it'll be very exciting. Uh, me and Ruby are going to a little get-together over at the Charles Jackson. Yeah, well, it's too bad that we can't... Uh, where'd you say? Uh, the Charles Jackson. But that's where I was going. Is you sure you was invited? Well, I guess so, Andy. They sent us an invitation. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess they invited you because they want you because you was a friend of mine. Yeah, they figure I wanted it that way, yeah. You know, doing me a favor. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You say you got your invitation already? Oh, uh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. Here it is, and gray and everything. Uh, pretty, ain't it? Uh, excuse me, Em, excuse me. Uh, what do you see outside? Oh, I thought I'd see the mailman cross the street, but can't him. Uh, well, Amos, I guess I'll see you at the Jackson party then. Uh, right now, i got to get over to Shorty's barber shop and start getting fixed up for the affair. <laughs> Shorty, what is that stuff you're putting on my hair? Oh, uh, they're just stuff that, uh, by, it's, it's a special hair oil. I, I mean, it's, it's got olive oil. It's, it's a pomade that you put, uh, it, 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 it's imported import hair gel that you make. Just plain lard. Lard. Lard on my hair? Yeah. How much is that costing me? Uh, Fifteen cents and two red points. <laughs> Two red points. Mm. Listen, Shorty, after this, please keep my scalp vegetarian, will you? <laughs> Say, by the way, uh, Shorty, I want to tell you that this is a nice smooth shave you done give me. Yeah, so thank you, Andy. Here, I'll, I'll hold up this looking glass so you can see how your hair looks in the back. Yeah. Yeah, it'll look nice and smooth. Yeah, that's the best... Uh... Hey, wait a minute, Shorty. Wait a minute. Hmm? The way you got that looking glass held up there, I was looking at the back of your head. <laughs> you will? Yeah. How do it look back there? <laughs> well, never mind how you look. The important thing is how I look. I was going to the richest New Year's Eve party in town. Real society stuff. Oh, you will? Yeah. That's nice, all right. Yeah, I ain't got my invitation yet, but I know I was going to get it. Too bad, too, that my friends can't be invited to a high-class party like this one. Yeah, it's bad, all that. You know what I'm saying? I, I sure sorry we can't be together New Year's Eve, Andy. Yeah, me too, Shorty. But that's how it goes when you was a high society type like I is. Mm. By the way, where are you invited to go New Year's Eve? Oh, I ain't going no place special. I, mm. I, I thought I'd stay at home. Uh, I, I'll be by myself. Uh, uh, I, I'll just take it easy and, and wear a... Uh, I'm going to the Charles Jackson party. Well, this is the last mail here, and my invite didn't come. Oh, me. This is going to be some New Year's Eve for me, all right. Well... Hello there, Miss Vander. Oh, hello, Lightning. Hello. Uh, so what's the matter, Miss Vander? How come you look so down in the dump? Oh, Lightning, I was regusted. I takes Camelia Jackson out and shows her a big time, and then her mama don't send me no invite to their New Year's Eve party. Uh, maybe the Jacksons don't approve of you for that daughter. Oh, you're crazy. Certainly they approve of me. Outside of the fact that I ain't got a job and ain't got no money in the bank, I was the most legible bachelor in town. Yeah, well, some parents are very stuck up that way. They don't want to see their daughter starve. Yeah, you're right, Lightning. They must be peculiar people. Uh, I wouldn't feel too bad about them, Miss Vanna. The Jacksons is very exclusive, and a lot of people wasn't invited, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Besides, old pal, now me and you can spend New Year's Eve together. Yeah, but we could, except for one thing. Yeah, what's that? Uh, me and my wife was invited to the Charles Jackson party. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Well, so long, Lightning. I'm going over to see the Kingfish. Look like he's the only one left that I can spend New Year's Eve with. <laughs> Kingfish, you too. Yeah, you see, and uh, being one of the reporting citizens of Harlem, uh, it was natural that the uh, Jackson sent me the invitation. Yeah, but uh, tell you what, son, uh, you come over and hang around the open window at the Jacksons, and maybe I can toss out a hunk of turkey or something like that to you, you know. <laughs> now, wait a minute, just a minute. I got pride like anybody else. I ain't hanging around no window where I wasn't invited, waiting for somebody to toss me out a hunk of turkey like a dog. Uh... Could you make it white meat? Uh, yeah, well, you know, Anna, after the way you took this uh, Camelia Jackson note, uh, 
I thought sure you'd be invited. Yeah, that's what I thought. It just go to show you that where human nature is concerned, you can't trust human nature where it's concerned. <laughs> yeah, I ain't quite figured that out, but I think you got something there all right. Yeah. Oh, you know, that camellia is going to give you a raw deal. Yeah, and I as mad. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. The thing that really hurts me is that I don't open my big mouth to everybody, telling them that I was the only one that was going to be invited, and now I was the only one that ain't. Now, look, Ann, look here. Uh, why don't you just forget it and take out some other gal and celebrate New Year's Eve that way? Oh, I can't do that. I was broke. That's why I was so happy that I could be with Camille at her house and not have New Year's cost me nothing. I wish there was some way that I could think of so I could be invited to that party. And wait a minute. What's the matter? You think of something? Listen, phone Camille. Tell her you was coming over to ask her something. Mm -hmm. And then when you get there, act like you don't know there's given a New Year's Eve party and invite her out to all the swell nightclubs in town for a big evening. But now, what good is that going to do? Well, you see, Ander, uh, when she hears you was inviting her to all these places, she's going to feel mighty ashamed of herself for not inviting you to the party. Yeah, that's right. She will, won't you? Yeah, that's the point, Andy. Now, look here. Then after that, what else can she do but invite you to her party right then and there? Oh, I tell you, son, it can't miss. That is called the art of hinting. <laughs> Kingfish, I think you're right. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, Camellia, Camellia, dear. What is it, Mama? Oh, Camellia, a terrible thing has happened, and I feel just awful about it. Why, what happened? Why, I just went over the invitation list again, and of all people, I forgot to send one to your boyfriend, Andy Brown. Oh, don't worry about it, Mama. Andy phoned and he'll be here any minute. I can ask him then. Oh, that's fine. I'm suddenly glad I discovered it before it was too late. Oh, that must be Andy now, Mama. I'll let him in. Well, say hello to him for me, Camelia. I still have so much to do before the party. All right, Mama. Hello, Andy. Come in. Hello, Camelia. Gee, it's good to see you, Andy. Uh, look, Camelia, i come over to ask you something. i got something to ask you, too. Yeah, well, uh, I'll ask you mine now. Uh, listen, Camelia, how about going out with me New Year's Eve to about three of the biggest nightclubs in Harlem? We'll really have a big time. Oh, Andy, I'd love to. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you can't on account of you've got it. uh, what'd you say? <laughs> I said I'd love to. You know, I was just about to ask you to come to the party my folks are giving. But what's an old party at home compared to the New Year's Eve you've got planned? Yeah, but, uh, uh, Camelia, uh, don't you think on second thought there, your folks might uh, not, uh, like you, uh, not being uh, at your own party? Oh, no, they won't mind. Oh, well, I couldn't do that. No, no, I, I'll cancel my reservations at the nightclubs and I'll come to your party. Andy, don't be silly. It's all settled. Now, I'm going to you on your New Year's Eve. Hmm, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm certainly glad there's a new year coming. It's got to have less trouble for me to get into than this one did. <laughs> The Kingfish's brilliant idea has hardly gone according to plan. And it looks like Andy has dug his own grave. We'll see if he can get out of it in just a moment. Say, folks, remember the visitor I had last New Year's? Yes, of course they remember. Nobody can forget me. Yeah, that's right. He said, uh, uh, hey, wait a minute. Who, who are you? <laughs> you know who I am. I am part of time. I'm on my way out. But not until I came up on you, Wilcox. Remember that woman in Peoria, Illinois? Uh, you, you mean the one who used to run her washer for nearly an hour at a time? Well, look, Spirit, I told her about Rinso. Now she knows it takes as little as a f five minute run per load to get clothes Rinso white. D don't haunt me, Spirit, please. Well, what about that woman over in Asheville, North Carolina? The one who used to wear herself out scrubbing every wash day. Uh, scrub. <laughs> I, I told her about Rinso, too. Now, now, now she lets Rinso's soapy rich suds soak her clothes clean. Good, Wilcox, good. Just one more little matter. Did you ever speak to that lady in St. Louis, Missouri? Uh, uh, about doing the dishes with Rinso, you mean? Oh, sure. 
Sure. She, she's been using Rinso. She says dishwashing is a snap. Fine, fine. Keep up the good work, Wilcox. You'll be hearing from me next year. Uh, friends, help me to have a good report next time, will you? Get Rinso. And now, <clears throat> back to the Amos and Andy show. <laughs> Looks like Andy is definitely going to spend New Year's Eve alone. By taking the Kingfisher's advice, he's gotten himself hooked up for an expensive evening, making the rounds of the best Harlem nightclubs. Andy is broke. And right now he's telling Amos his troubles. Well, that's the story, Amos. And I ain't got the money to take it to a picture show, much less to three big nightclubs. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing, Andy. Where you as concerned, there certainly ain't no trouble shortage. Uh, what is you going to tell Camelia Jackson now? I done already told her. What? I phoned a little while ago that I was called out of town on business. Oh, Amos, a fine New Year's Eve I'm going to have. Now, wait a minute. Here comes Fred Wendell. Well, hello there, boys. Happy New Year to both of you. Yeah. Yeah, same to you, Fred. Uh, Andy, uh, the reason I dropped in was to ask you to do a little favor well, for Now, me. wait a minute. Wait a minute. I ain't in no mood to do nobody no favor. <laughs> I was in a mess. <laughs> And I don't see nobody trying to help me out. Uh, but, then, look here, I done been invited to the Jackson party, and since I hear that you ain't going, I want you to do me a favor so I can go. Oh, yeah, you want me to do you a favor so you can go. Everybody goes there but me. Well, I ain't going to do you no favor. Yeah, well, since you ain't going to the party, and at least you can listen to what Fred's got to say. Look, fellas, look, I got enough trouble without listening to either one of you. Now, will you all get out of here and let me alone, both of you? I ain't doing no favors for nobody. Well, Andy, if that's the way you feel about it, all right, so long. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'll go with you, Fred. I got to drive by and pick up the woman that's going to stay with our children so Reuben and me can go to the party tonight. Well, so long, Andy. Uh, sorry you feel like you do, but so long. Say, sorry that I feel like I do. They all get invited to the party. But I is alone. And it's almost New Year's Eve, too. Hello there, Andy. Well, well, Reverend Johnson, come in, come in. Well, yeah, thank you. Didn't see you at church this morning, Andy. Yeah, well, uh, 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 I've been pretty busy today, Reverend Johnson. Uh, I'll be there next week, though. Yes, I can understand about people being busy. Yes, a lot of our friends are busy preparing for the new year. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, that's right. That, that, that's exactly what I was busy doing, yes, sir. You know, Andy, preparing for the new year in the right way is just as important as coming to church. Maybe in some cases even more important. It is, huh? Yes, you see, Andy, to most people, the new year is a symbol of hope and promise for something better. It's the opportunity to erase the mistakes of the past to make new friendships and to strengthen the old ones. But deeper than that, Andy, the hour of twelve, that line between the old year and the new, is actually a horizon beyond which all hope for a better world. Yeah, you're right, yes, sir. We're all hoping to find a better world, all right. Ah, uh, but that's a mistake, Andy. Finding implies luck, chance. We don't find a better world. We make a better world. We do? How do we make it? Why, well, by doing things for other people. Hmm. You see, when you do things for other people, Andy, they love you for it. And when there's love, there can't be greed. And when there's no greed, there's no hate. And where there's no hate, there can be no such thing as war. And that, Andy, is a better world. Uh... Reverend Johnson, uh, you mean that if I do another fella a favor, someday it'll come back to me? That, is that what you mean? A thousand fold. Remember these words, my son. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Mm, cast thy bread. Say, Reverend, uh, I just remember a favor I refused to do for a friend. I'm going out and do it right now, you know it. Well, I'm glad, Andy. By doing this favor, you'll make this a better world. Yes, sir. You can count on me. But don't expect too much of a change the first day. Uh, Fred, 
Ted, in other words, when you was over there and asked me to do a favor for you, you know, uh, I was a little short with you there. My mind was on something else, and I think that I give you kind of a short answer. Well, Andy, it sure is nice of you to come over here and tell me all that. In other words, you mean that you will do me the favor? Oh, sure I will, sure. Uh, like Reverend Johnson say, cast a few crumbs of bread on the waters and you get back loaves of bread. Uh, now, uh, uh, what do you want me to do for you, Fred? Uh, well, now, look here, Andy. Uh, here's what I want you to do, and, and I sure will appreciate it, too. Yeah. Uh, you know I are doing a lot of jobs over at the newspaper there, and one of my jobs is a society reporter. Yeah, I know that. And uh, I got some uh, work to do tonight. But if uh, you could do it for me, you see, that would uh, make it so I could go to the Jackson party. Oh, sure, Fred. I'd be glad to do it for you. Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, well, now, look here. Uh, you're, you're exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, I'm supposed to make the rounds of the best Harlem nightclubs and get the names of the prominent guests spending New Year's Eve at these clubs, you see? Uh, uh, I, I make the rounds of the best Harlem nightclubs, you say? Uh, yeah, that's right, Anna. That, that's exactly right. And the head waiter in each one of them will give you a list of, of all the guests there, you see? Mm-hmm. Now, now, here's a press pass that will admit you and one friend to all of them. And by the way, Anna, uh, you being a representative of the press, the, the management of each nightclub will give you all all your refreshments and food free of charge. That's what it do. Boy, that Reverend Johnson really knows his stuff, don't he? <laughs> oh. This is great. I'll call comedian till I was back in town. <clears throat> that bread I cast on the water this time is coming back in the shape of a wedding cake. <laughs> Reverend Johnson, uh, I was on my way over to pick up my gal, Camelia, but I just dropped in to tell you how much I appreciate your advice you gave me, uh, you know, about helping others and getting repaid for it. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Andy. Oh, yeah. From now on, I as a firm believer in that helping and getting repaid stuff. I ain't never seen nothing work so fast. Andy, I wonder if you'd do a favor for me right now. Well, I got a handful of bread. Where do you want me to throw it? <laughs> Well, there's a young couple, a soldier and his girl. Well, they're waiting in the chapel for me to marry. I was on my way out to find a witness, but now that you're here... Oh, Joe, Joe, I'll be glad to be a witness at the wedding show. Well, thank you, Andy. Yeah, here's a young couple now. Sally, Jimmy, come over here, will you? I'd like for you to meet Andrew Brown. How you do, Mr. Brown? Yeah, I do. Uh, congratulations, uh... uh I suppose now the two of you is getting married, you're going out and have a swell time celebrating New Year's Eve and your wedding both. Well, we sure like to, but I'm afraid we can't do much celebrating. Getting married is taking about all the money we've got. You mean you two young people aren't going to celebrate your wedding and on New Year's Eve, too? Well, you see, Reverend, the reason we are getting married so unexpectedly like this is because Jimmy's going overseas any day now. And we just got enough money left for me to get back home. Oh, well, that's a shame, uh... You could afford to go out some way, though, could you? Well, I don't know, Andy. It's pretty expensive going out on New Year's Eve. Mm, yeah, that is right. The cafes are charging and... Uh, say, wait a minute. I got an idea. Why couldn't I give the soldier and his gal here the press pass that... Uh, I wonder if I was overdoing this catching the bread stuff. <laughs> Andy, what are you thinking about? Well, I was just thinking that I could uh, give the bride and the groom, uh, uh, yeah, that'd help make a better world. Yeah. Look here, Jimmy. You and Sally are going to have a wonderful New Year's celebration for your wedding. Now, listen. Here's a press pass. Both of you go to the best places in Harlem, and it won't cost you a single cent before you get it all. This is great. Back home. Four walls. By myself. Had to go get soft out of it and give that trespass away to them kids. I could be dancing with Camellia right now at some nightclub. This ain't a mess. I wish everybody let me alone. Come in. 
Well, hello there, Andy. Oh, Amos, uh, what you doing here? I thought you and Ruby was at the Charles Jackson party. Well, we couldn't go, Andy. The woman that was supposed to stay with the children couldn't come, so me and Ruby stay at home. And then Reverend Johnson dropped by, and he told us what you'd done and how you'd be all alone tonight. Yeah, I guess I was a sucker. Spoiling my New Year's Eve for a couple of strange kids. Reverend Johnson told me to cast my bread on the water and come back to me. I was unhappy, Amos. Unhappy? Why, yeah. Andy... What you done tonight ought to make you the happiest and proudest man I know. You see, Andy? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait till I answer the phone out in the hall here. Wait a minute. Yeah, well, take your time, Andy. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Uh, Andy, uh, this is Fred Quindell again. Oh, listen, Fred, I couldn't go to the nightclubs for you, but I got a friend of mine that's going, and he'll get you all of the names. Oh, that's great, Andy, because I was going to ask you to change your plans for me anyway. What you mean? Uh, you know, uh, over at the newspaper, I take care of the theatrical news, too, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 a girl that just got to town, and she's been invited to a big uh, private party tonight, and I was wondering if you would go with her. Uh, you go right to the party, you'll have a swell time. Well, who is the gal? Uh, hold your hat, Andy. It's Lena Horn. Lena Horn? She is the best-looking gal in the country. Yeah, well, now, look here. Put on your best clothes. I'll meet you in front of your house with an automobile, and I'll take you over and introduce you. Okay, see you in ten minutes. So long. Amos, that Reverend Johnson is as right as two rabbits. Oh, uh, what happened? What happened? I done cast some crumbs of bread on the water, and somebody done sent me a bakery. <laughs> And Andy again. How do you do, folks? Hello, everybody. Well, for the time is about to chop off another year. And before the year passes, we want to again tell you folks how much we really appreciate your friendship and loyalty, which you have shown us in the past. Yes, we are very grateful for the way we have listened to our program each week. Also for your very nice letters. And we are very grateful for the fact that so many of our friends have tried Rinso through hearing Harlow Wilcox tell about it. Yes, we feel particularly proud of that because we know you have found Linso to be a great help to you. We're going to try to merit your continued friendship during the coming year by giving you the very best shows that we can possibly give. And now, from our hearts, we wish you a very happy new year, hoping that 1945 will bring victory and happiness. That goes for me, too, folks. Good night, and happy new year. Oh, my God.